Um, this park started in the 1930s by uh, the Foreign Service. What was happening is Tex Pan settled, uh, as we said, a man from Oregon came up. The natives originally didn't live on this island. They lived on surrounding islands. And what was happening is they'd lost their barter system. With all the white men coming up here, they couldn't barter as well as they could before. They started to leave their homes, quote unquote, behind, moved to Ketchikan to find work in the cannery. And uh, the government didn't want to lose that art, that history. And so they had uh, the CCC, if anybody's heard of them, Conservation Conservation Corps. Mm -hmm. So out to some of those islands, try to salvage some of those old totem poles. Uh, some had been stolen, some had been vandalized, some had fallen over in the water, varying degrees of decay. They saved what they could. Some of the very old poles are in our heritage center, that's in our downtown city park. And then they hired native carvers to carve new poles. <laughs> so the poles in this park, most were carved in the 30s and 40s. Some of them uh, repaired or replaced them, but most of them were in the 30s and 40s. They are original totem poles because they're carved by hand, the traditional way. Um, but they did replicate some of the old designs. There's some of the stories uh, and poles I'll show you uh, were carved on other poles that did not last. Now, uh, contrary to early beliefs, totem poles were not carved to be worshipped as idols. They had functions. And what are their functions? Uh, these are both examples of memorial poles. When somebody dies, uh, they may carve a pole um, in their memory. This pole actually was a mortuary pole. A memorial pole, but it was a little different. In the back of that pole, there was actually a compartment, and they would place that person's ashes inside the compartment and seal it over. Obviously, from the eagle plan. Now, this person must have been a very important person. The front part of that eagle, that's what we call a chilcot blanket, and the original one, this is just painted, the original one would have been inlaid with, with stones and metals, and it would have been really quite ornate. It must have been very, somebody very important in the plan, possibly the chief. This pole over here, Let's just up here at the <coughs> I don't get to say that very often. Usually I'm putting on layers. This pole called Thunderbird on Whale. Hmm. Pretty simple. What are you looking at? The Thunderbird and Whale both are some of their plans. Now the Indians believed in magic, mythology. They like to make up stories to explain things in nature. So the Thunderbird clan, for example, they believed this big Thunderbird, so big it could grab whales right out of the ocean, carry it up to mountaintops where it would devour it. And that's how they explained finding whale bones in the mountains with the Thunderbird. Those whale bones actually left from the ice age. Also, the big Thunderbird, when it flapped those big wings, that's what made thunder. When it blinked its eyes, lightning. So simple. I can actually understand that. Okay. We're going to make our way into the rainforest, and I'll uh, okay. come on. Right. Put in the shade. These are salmonberry bushes on, on your right. Now in this park, it is a state park. It's okay to pick any berries if you want to try them. It's okay to touch any of the poles, take all your photography. It's fine to do that. You want to take one? It's so peaceful down here, don't it? Mm-hmm. Mm. Wood ticks bad up here? Nope, we don't have wood ticks. For real, that's... They're other little bitey creatures, though. Like I'll add up here so I can... Everybody can kind of get it, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, freaking awesome. When it's raining, it's usually pretty dry in here. It's called Rainforest Canopy. It's kind of version of the actual canopy on the road. So, um, you're in the Alaska Rainforest. Hmm. The, uh... Main trees in our forest, about 70% are western hemlock trees. So uh, this is a hemlock, that's a hemlock, that's a hemlock. Uh, you can reach any of the beetles. Uh, the needles on the hemlock are really soft. It's kind of a line, also lighter green for some of the Now the other kind of trees, uh, we have the big tall thick hip spruce, that's our eastern trees. Uh, those have needles as well. If you see any uh, on their branches, the needles go all the way around the book of the branch, and it's kind of like a bottle brush. 
fruit trees. And then we have the western red cedar. And they also have needles. And uh, their needles are pretty flat, kind of in a sham, uh, fan shape. So uh, that's cedar tree. Like. Now uh, we also have yellow cedar. And then our main leafy tree is the red alder. Um, now those last three trees, the natives carved out of all three of those. They carved their totem poles out of the western red cedar. Uh, they actually called it the tree of life. It has so many functions. It decays from the inside out, so they would hollow it out and carve canoes. And the outer part is the totem pole part. And that's why it could last so long. If you hollow out the inside, that's the part that decays. That outer part can really last hundreds of years. They also would strip off the bark and weave baskets, strip it finer, weave rope, and even uh, make clothing and even baby diapers out of the bark of the western <laughs> Now they would also carve out of the yellow cedar. The yellow cedar has a tighter, finer grain, so they would carve smaller items, such as bentwood boxers, uh, walking sticks, and half hell of a book, small items. Now they even carved out of the alder. The red alder are very hard wood, but it was less oily, so they made their cooking utensils, their spoons, ladles, bowls, out of the red alder. That way, when they were eating, they would taste their food and not the wood. They must be on the cedar. Mm -hmm. Now you may notice some of the big leafy plants back here is what here. This one actually kind of a small one. It keeps so down to two. Uh, and we'll see some more. That is the sun tab. Uh, sun tab, it's just the same. In the spring, there's a stalk and a flower. And you break that off, it does smell like a couple. I had to try it, and it's true. <laughs> now, I've had a couple important uses. Uh, the leaves uh, actually get quite large, three to four feet sometimes. And the natives would use those big leaves of the sun cabbage, wrap it around the salmon, put it in the coals of their fire, and cook their salmon that way. So it's kind of like early sun oil. Um, also, the root of the sun cabbage is a natural laxative. So the bears, when they hibernate in the fall, they little twigs and stones, it slows down their metabolism. Come spring, they go and look for that root of the sun cabbage. It cleans them out, they're good to go. <laughs> Our motto, Regular bears happy bears. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, there are two types of bears on the island that aren't even dangerous. Baby bears and elk bears. But they have no teeth. They found them. <laughs> 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 Elder bears and baby bears. Also, you know, this, like over here, oh, yeah, uh, this island is so rocky. Uh, a big wind, the roof can't go very deep, so a big wind blows it over. Things like all the topsoil, anything with it, it does make them very good. So they're very good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if they see bears in this park, they would have put a nose. But there are a lot of black bears on the island. Now, <laughs> there are no snakes. No snakes. No snakes. <laughs> okay, we'll continue, George. Snakes. <laughs> Not unless you guys smuggled one on the ship. <laughs> <laughs> So. Who would do that in the first place? Now, I'm, I will truly be amazed. Fallen 
Now if you look up here, these two straight trunks go pretty tall up there. You'll see some deformed branches here. That's going to sealed by what we call dwarf mistletoe. It sucks the leaves right out of the tree. It actually made it grow with the branches and the leaves. We've also made things that will make Ooh. Okay. So that's the winter maker. Yeah, not really. Not the one you're thinking. It could. Thank you. 
storytelling, they raised the potlatch pole, uh, and drink, and they gave away gifts. They basically gave their wealth away. And uh, of course, the tradition of the potlatch is if you were a high-ranking person in the family, you were expected in the near future to throw a potlatch. It's like those people who your potlatch, so it's kind of how they Well, the bear plants invited some of these uh, killer whale plants to the farmhouse to pretext for that party. They got them inside the farmhouse and started to fight them and kill several of them. Well, the killer whale plants were stunned. Now the party's usually possible. And uh, it wasn't fun at all. So they actually sat down and they told them that they uh, killed them because they killed their teeth. And they actually sat down and negotiated a new peace treaty for uh, this new trespassing on So something that came out of it. Uh, but you know, the peace part around the bear hatch uh, means that they were a fair plan and they got more than the plan. The plan seems to all get along. You just have to be careful. Uh, um, now, totem bites, this part of the fence started in the 30s uh, with the C16, and that went off and on 30s and 40s. Uh, I got Paul to do a little bit during the war. Um, and it was run by the Forest Service until 1959 when it became the state. And so it was turned over to the state of Alabama. Now the word totem means from nature, archer, <coughs> and bite. The name is actually uh, bite. You know what that is? It looks like a sea monster with the bite of a little bit. The totem bite. The totem bite. That is awesome. <laughs> I don't think so. so. This is our brand new restoration shed. They still this last time. They've got some old seven holes in there that need a little work on. Some of these should be lying on the ground. One of them needs to be out in the park. Oh, yeah. 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 Now, some folks are cars lying flat like that. We do still have several active carbon sheds on the island, so they are in a shed like this. The carbon line flat, and they use a tool called an ad, A D Z E. It's kind of like a hatchet, but it's just a blade like this, blades like this. They have different sizes, and uh, the smaller one would be for more detail carving, the bigger one would be for hauling out the rubbing out the initial part. And they would go over and over and over again, and that's what leads the texture. And this is the time now to see uh, the texture on the on the walls and on the on the totem pole. Uh, it smooths it out, it does leave a texture. You can see where all those ad marks were, but it is smooth, there's no sliver. So it does smooth it out, but it does leave the texture the texture. Now uh, originally well, they still use hand to hand ads to carve. And a, a good carver uh, still makes his own tools. He makes a handle of the ads out of an alder tree. He looks for a, 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 a trunk like this and then a branch coming out at 45 degree angle. Cut that off like this, turn it over, 
Time sharpening than making. Yeah, well, if you're sharp, you're not going to be able to do it. No, I understand. Like yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Feels good. Traditionally, we just have one door at the 
probably even a little shorter than that. And that was for protection. The front houses were a bit updated, so a lot of updates on this. And that was because uh, in the summer and fall, the new boys would be out fishing and hunting. Might be the little children's um, elders back in the clan house. They could be susceptible for attacks. So if somebody was going to attack you, you would have to come through that room door. work. They would have a clear view of you. There's no trees out there to hide the clan. You would have to enter and skip those positions. Head first, one foot at a time. That would be the weather zone from the other way. You would have a rock for a stick. Go back and sit over the head, push it aside, and go back. That was the protection. One very small door. Now, we don't. We had walk in closets, they had walk on closets. <laughs> that every other door would lift up and hollow under there. There was a door that was there. It was a lock with the car being a little bit back underneath the floor door. Now, the rear is there. They would take the tallest person in the land, slide them down, count how many boards tall he was, and that's how my room was in the shop. Now, Work. Like there's kind of a target of 50 people within the time. Yeah. Very well, the plan might have separate little buildings out of the city of Chief of Iron Man people. But there should have been that people living in the plan. Now, another use of total holes is what we call house holes. Um, every time I have a house hole, we're total holes holding up the lead for a roof. Here's your card to show you the plan. In this case, they're all part of the same. They tell the story of duck tools. Dutchel also means black skin. Dutchel was the youngest of three brothers. And uh, their uncle was the chief. And it was their tradition, it was the mother's brother that taught and trained the children. Their uncle had promised each of them to teach them how to fish and hunt. Dutchel being the youngest of the family came. Well, uh, their uncle who got fishing with it, wandered into a group of sea lions. Uh, this is a little sea lion here. And uh, the people who see one of the guys who played, he a strong tail, bumped into the chief, knocked him over, he fell against the rock, and he was going to die. Well, they brought him back, and of course, had to plot the revenge. They wanted to kill the whole sea lion and kill the chief. They knew they'd have to be very strong to take on that whole sea lion. So, Dexter's brother decided they would start a training program. And Dexter wanted to participate, but they said, oh, no, he's never even been fishing. You can't do it. So, uh, Dutchel's brothers and the men in the village, every day they would go down to the beach and they would walk back and forth in that whole water, carrying boulders or heavy roots to build up their strength in their arms and their stamina in the whole water. They did that every day. And then they would come in to my house and rest. Well, Dutchel did not want to be left out. So, what he did is during the night when they were on the fire, he would go down to the beach and he would do the same thing, walk back and forth in the water, carry the big boulders, and work on his strength. Well, then he was so tired that during the day, he would come in and lay by the fire and sleep. Well, he started to call him lazy. Uh -huh. They became him black skin. His skin got black because he was laying next to the fire and had like ash. Now, his, his uh, aunt knew what he was doing, and she had encouraged him about bringing things to the So, regardless of being a uh, called men, he continued to do this. So, uh, everybody kept training. And his brothers finally decided they thought they were strong and they were going to get it. They were going to go after that big old sea lion. They got all of them in the village, go back in the canoes where they had out, and those up to a lot of go. He begged and pleaded. He said, he's a bit of water out here. You be the surface. Just please, you couldn't come at all. And they finally said, oh, okay, you can go. So that's what locked up. Well, they found the big old sea lion, and the first brother they thought it was the strongest in the whole plan, but after that big old sea lion could not be seen. Same with the second one. Same with every man in the plant. They could not defeat that big old sea lion. He was just too strong. They weren't sure what to do. Then little duck tool jumped up. He went in there and the sea lion grabbed him on and threw over his shoulder. Grabbed him on there and threw over his shoulder. One by one, he got to the big old sea lion, grabbed him by his tail, he went right there. That's a big thing to do. Well, they were just stunned. They couldn't believe it. They went back to the village. They still couldn't believe it. But the ant would have been the white of the chief. That's what they say. No, he was crazy. He made fun of him and he was crazy. And they were so upset that they didn't even cheat as was in spite of white reason down on top. So, uh, the story is not cool. That's not a better story. It's a couple of good morals. Don't judge somebody by their looks. 
And also, if a young boy has somebody who encourages them, it's just a mindful, they can't.